So Julie's going to talk to us a bit about that project. It involves data, and it's really neat. Um, and then after Julian's done, we're going to do the pitches and split off into groups. So once Julian's finished up, I'll come back up here and we'll organize that piece. And then we'll have the rest of the night. So over to you, Julian. Welcome, welcome. Uh, 
yeah, I think I should check this picture as well. <laughs> During our air monitoring training, we <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they strap onto bicycles and uh, and to strollers as well. We've had someone strap them onto uh, walkers. Someone with a South Etobicoke um, skateboarding mom who would go out with her kids skateboarding and get gather data. So people can really do it um, at their own time. We're not collecting data in a very regimented way where we say people have to go out at certain times or very specific routes. There's flexibility, and as the map grows, and we have kind of hot spots we want to hear more, we'll, we'll give those assignments. So I'll show a little bit about the equipment. Uh, we give it out in these little lunch pails here. I can pass it around as well afterwards. Um, but we have um, air monitors. Even, people often comment that they look like a little uh, um, Polaroid camera. Um, but they're really sensitive. They're like, nice and uh, lightweight and they're measuring PM 2.5, so fine particulates. It's one of the top 25 chemicals of concern in Toronto. Uh, sources can include uh, thermal combustion, so industry and transportation as well as construction. So I can actually just pass this around now. Okay. You'll see the readings are coming up right on the screen there. It's measuring um, any particles that are smaller than 2.5 micrometers. So again, these can just get strapped on, they can be carried. Measuring one substance, but it's good because it's a good general indicator of air quality. The other piece is a little uh, GPS device. Uh, you can go in people's pockets, uh, maps where they go, and both sets, both pieces of equipment uh, for a timestamp um, on the information. We started in South Chicago with five of these air monitors, and more recently we expanded it to ten. Uh, we have a crowdfunding campaign, and we're able to double our fleet. Ooh, so. <laughs> <laughs> So all of this uh, data is being mapped out um, at inhalemap.com. Has anyone seen this map before? A couple people. Um, so if you click it and show you just at a glance, you'll see that we have uh, you know, readings that are overlaid on the Google map. We were really fortunate to help, have the help of a U of T PhD student who was doing work on air quality. Um, so part of his work on his PhD, he helped us build this website. It's kind of similar to something you would have seen if you're looking at uh, air quality data that was being collected around the PNF Games. City installed special air or had special monitoring stations because they knew the air quality would affect the app. So you'll see some similar aspects of that map to our map. But it is putting all of the uh, data um, that's gathered onto the map. Um, it's really accessible and interactive. So I'll pull it up. Thank <laughs> you. 
actually working. You can see it popped up using thing called Dialos. Um, it downloads as a Word file or Notepad file for the monitor and an Excel spreadsheet for the GPS. Sorry, the resolution is a little bit off. We're able to say whether a volunteer is done by bicycle or walking or another way. It takes a while to upload. Nice and easy with the actually drag and drop of the data. Uh, you can see that volunteers can go and see which data they specifically monitor. And in addition to the squares that show an average um, of the samples gathered, when volunteers log in, they can see more details about their specific route. So it's kind of hard to see here a little bit, but they're little tiny circles. So those are the specific spots where they measure. Um, whereas the rest of the squares on the map represent um, an average, an overall particle count, the green to red on this view, you can allow people to see what was the best and worst part of your route. So let's say you like to work off and you want to test five different routes which is the best one, uh, best for air quality, you would be able to see that. So, um, <coughs> one great thing about inhales, we're seeing there's a lot of use for it um, as an engagement tool. Um, we're, we want to use it to shape conversations we have about air quality. Um, and quality of life in our city overall. We are still working in South Etobicoke right now. We're really engaging people with the data that we've collected. Um, we also want to plug people into moments where they can help influence decision making. Um, so uh, right now we're also doing down one four. We're going to keep engaging people on solutions as we monitor through until the winter. We want to think about you know, how we can use combination of air quality that relates to development. Um, we have a lot of streets like Young Street where uh, the water mains will be pulled up. There's a lot of changing things that can happen on that street. Um, so one thing we're doing right now with Open Streets Toronto is we're doing some data collection before and after and during Open Streets when they close down the streets for pedestrian activities. Um, working the street EIA as well, we're really interested in improving the quality of life on the street as the street will go through. So just a couple of challenges with our project has been the limited limited number of air monitors. So we only have ten. We have a lot of demand for them, a lot of people who want to go out and monitor. There's time to get that data off and get it back in people's hands. We do have some limitations with the map. So this was built um, by someone who is who's no longer able to provide us with a lot of support. We also would like to find ways to add additional layers of data, some positive things, some positive visualizations, which we should give us you know, more negative visualization about air pollution. Um, we also like to have some interesting ways to represent our stationary air monitoring. There's been some interest there to stay at the you know, street corner and gather a lot of data there over times of day. So we'd love to have ways to work with our map or do some more data analysis beyond what we have. Um, our project funding does also end in October. Um, we're going to keep monitoring through till the winter. Uh, we know this is also an opportunity though to think about what does the next phase of this look like. Um, we have heard a lot of ideas. I'm really interested in hearing what ideas we have. We have ideas of how else we could use this data. What could this project look like moving forward? Um, so this is funded by the Metcalf Foundation. It's the initiative for healthy air and local economies. We do have this equipment. We have a lot of knowledge. Part of that was to be able to share with other cities who replicate this. But we're interested just in how we can keep that going um, in Toronto. So, number two, um, if you have additional questions or thoughts after this, um, you can email me. My email is metcalfoundation.org. Um, on Twitter, Facebook, you can find us to Viro.
So we're using a bit of that to push the undergarden or engage them back together to generate interest in air quality. So it can kind of be used as that sort of tool. Uh, we're kind of exploring what that could be. Overall, it's really about engagement. And, uh, Everybody know what the undergardener is? They may not know. <laughs> um, so it's a, a redevelopment under the public space. So some of the concerns is there is a lot of air pollution from that area. Um, not saying that we shouldn't have these really valuable public spaces, more so what could we do to really make sure that air quality is good for people who are using that space. Okay, so get people involved in this and there's a learning area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And again, it's also to make some of that information just a little bit more visible since it can be in so many different I think something we'd love to see is more opportunities to pull all of those people together. And to that end, I'm just going to insert a question. Are you going to release the data? We are happy to. That's something we'd also love to hear, the, like people's ideas. Okay. How would you want to use this data? What are ways that we can make it? Okay, so I'm glad we inserting that. But you are kind of thinking that, right? Yeah. Really. <laughs> we're really happy to share. The only thing for us is remove, making sure it's not tied to any person or any sort of thing like that. But we're really interested in that topic. Right. Okay. Wait, so I'm, I'm surprised. Why is it that the environment Canada uh, need both of them? They want to make it in Canada. Um, there's different kinds of data that's being collected. This is at the street level. So what we have for monitoring air quality is the four provincial air monitoring stations. That information is available on their website. It's graphed based on the hour. Some uh, measure different things. Those are primarily used to uh, establish the uh, air quality health index. So that information is available. The city is doing air quality studies that are based on existing data in the area. So they're not doing additional data, but they're doing pollution sources and doing those studies. And then there have been some UTs that so are really great work. What are they trying to do? What you are doing? Mm -hmm. What are they doing? Well, ours is different than it's at the street level and specifically measuring PM2.5. So as I said, we just have those air monitoring stations um, that are really spread out far throughout Ontario. There's four. There's only one within the property. Yes, exactly. So that's why we're doing something at the street level where people are. And they're very sensitive. We're not saying that this is the most like rigorous scientific sort of tool. Of course, doing more modeling and, and would get us a different sort of set of data. Again, this is just like a piece of the picture of what air quality looks like. Can you guys all hear what we're talking about? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so <laughs> monitoring the air is provincial, not federal responsibility. Is that right? As far as I know, again, my, our, my colleague Heather, who's a, formerly our toxics campaigner and campaign director, would know a little bit more about that. As far as what I know, as far as monitoring the company in Toronto, it's a little bit Okay. So, any other hands on this side? No? Okay, hands up. Can you put them up high? I'm going to do it this way. Okay, right, so go ahead first. So, it seems like the device is the bottleneck for increasing the project. Is there a way we can, like, what's the cost of the device? And can we make it to, so what's the like payment access reader is uh, uh, you just put it on the, the phone and you just make that you just go through it. Is there something like a small device that we can plug into the phones and people can carry on with it? It makes, it can make it cheaper and probably more easy to distribute. When your partner did look at different options, fortunately, the smaller you go with the devices, the less reliable they are. So this, we are measuring PM2.5 specifically because it's a good thing to measure, um, but also because we could get more reliable devices that are portable. So unfortunately, some of that might not get us quite um, as much data. How much do you Oh, yes. Um, so when we were doing our fundraising, we said $1,000 per package. Um, the monitors themselves are a special format from a corporation called Silos. Um, they're around five or six hundred dollars, and there's the GPS, there's the calibration, and some of the equipment that goes along with it. We did fundraise a bit for staff costs just because this is such a labor to the project as well, in addition to the, um, in addition to the. Okay. So maybe we, we can uh, take down, like, find out the exact hardware, and then see if there's any way to hack it. I think it might be what's going yeah. to yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Maybe I might have missed this, but are you using any historical data to sort of uh, look at the difference? Again, historical data? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I know a good probably not much out there. Yeah, I mean, some of the data that we would have, for example, like South Coast Air Quality Study, it came out in 2013. Uh, that's interesting. That's something I can ask my team. It's not something I, I know of that we've looked at yet. Okay, good suggestion. <laughs> Okay, I'm second player, and then I'm going to play it. Can you see the way to the size of the way to what you're doing? I mean, what you've mentioned a few times the size of the park below your mentor, you said it's a good idea to measure that park below. What do you mean by that being good? I mean, what, what's, for example, a, a, a pool when it registers? 
registers as poor, mm -hmm. what, 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 what does that mean? What are the consequences? Uh, well, PM 2.5 the reason it is a good thing for us to measure is because it's listed um, under Toronto's top 25 chemical register. So we know it's something we don't have a lot of data about, and it's really poorly regulated. So often its sources are from combustion. So we'll see a lot of transportation. The reason it's also good to measure is because when we see PM 2.5 is higher, there'll be a lot of other substances that are higher because they're coming from similar sources. Um, it can have a lot of really negative impacts for people with any sort of existing respiratory issues, as well as heart emotions. So we know there's a lot of premature deaths in Toronto. Uh, I can't remember the stat off the top of my head, but it is in 2014, so it's a good study. Uh, it does have a lot of negative impacts. Uh, it's also kind of but yes, it's one of those things, especially for more vulnerable people within Toronto, uh, who are experiencing issues like asthma or you know, elderly people. It can really cause a good hospitalization. Okay, anybody else got a burning question? Otherwise, it's going to wrap up. It doesn't really burn. Okay, last one. I'll take your last one. Okay. <laughs> you guys have any uh, response from uh, the officials, the government officials of Toronto, or anyone's responsible like, based on the data you collected? Um, try to remember. And again, if there's some questions that are a little more technical, I can get back to you. Because um, there is somebody who's designed this project for like, a little bit more technical knowledge and would have spoken to any city folks when this was getting started. Um, I haven't heard anything negative at all. We've Connected, especially downtown, we've had a really positive response from city councilors. We met with them, they want to monitor, they're telling us you know, what's going on in their communities, how they'd love to see this data be used. I'm not sure much on the city staff sort of piece, um, but I know we've been engaged with them. And we've engaged with them a little bit on the undergarment. So there's much more enthusiasm on that point. That's a good um, piece of advice, right? To yeah. take when it's done, to take it. Yeah, yeah. 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 for sure. Okay, cool. So we got three other things to do. We got announcements, pitches for new projects, and then projects are going to come up and what they're working on and then you can join or not. So the first thing I just mentioned is announcements. Um, what this is, is if you have something, you heard all the people who were in the room, big variants of who's in here. Um, if there's anything that you'd like to share with this group, this is the time to do it. Um, examples are like if you're running an event, if you're looking to hire someone, or if you've had success with a project of your own or something like that. Something somebody in here would want to know about. Uh, and that's the 30 second thing and we're keeping time. Does anybody want to make any announcements? Okay, good. So, start with you, Richard. So, two announcements. I'm the organizer of the Toronto Open Data Book Club.